What's up guys, I'm Nico with Camp Crunch and this is my iPhone 6S Plus. Now I just got this phone recently and I've been quite impressed with the camera. So in this video I'm going to teach you guys, I'm gonna share some tips on how you can get better photos using your iPhone or any smartphone for that matter with similar features to this iPhone 6S Plus. So the first thing you'll wanna know when taking pictures with your smartphone is that lighting is everything. It's not just with the smartphone, but with photography in general. You know, the better light that you have or the better quality of light you have, the better the image is going to turn out. And with these smartphones especially, these smartphones have smaller sensors than your advanced point and shoot cameras, your mirrorless cameras, or your DSLR cameras. So these really don't perform too well in low light situations. And I'm sure some of you or all of you are aware of that. You might take a picture at night and it just doesn't look as good as the pictures you take in the day. So the more light you can have in your image, the better it is for these smartphones. So next time you're composing an image, don't just look at your subject and how it's, you know, how it's looking. You need to also look or, you know, think about the quality of light that you have, whether there's enough light or whether the light you know, is hitting your subject uh, the right way, the more light and the better light that you have, the better quality image you're going to have coming out of the smartphone. Now, the second tip is to always have your subject in focus. And I know this sounds simple, but it's often overlooked. So when someone, when you usually take a photo with your smartphone, you know, a lot of people will just point and then click and then take that shot. But what you can do with most phones is you can, you know, point you can click on something and it's going to adjust the focus to focus on whatever you click on. And that's very important because sometimes you'll see an image where you don't do that, where you don't point and click to get something in focus. When you look at it later on, it looks just slightly softer than it should be. And that could simply be because, you know, the image is focused on something, you know, right next to whatever you wanted in focus or right behind it. That can throw the whole image off. So always make sure you have your subject in focus. I know it's simple, again, but it makes the world of a difference. The third tip is to always get your exposure correct. So this tip is going to help you not just shoot in good lighting, but even in darker lighting situations where you normally have trouble getting a nice image. One of the tips I'm going to share with you guys today will help you guys out a lot. Now usually with a phone, when you click to focus, it's also going to get the exposure for whatever you click. So it's going to make sure that whatever you click looks correct. And the way it does that is it usually balances out the tones in that image to middle gray. So it tries to get the average basically, not too dark and not too light. And when you're shooting in the daytime, it usually does the job just fine. So if you click on something, it's going to look correct. Now, one thing you can do is change exposure with the iPhone at least and many other cameras. And you do that by clicking. And then once you have the exposure that the camera gives you, you can drag your finger up or you can drag, drag it down to either increase or decrease the exposure or make the image lighter or darker. And this is a good way to adjust your image. And one of the things that I recommend you doing, especially when you're shooting at night. Remember how I told you guys that the camera tries to average your scene out to middle gray? Well, when you shoot at night and things are mostly black anyway, mostly in the shadow, mostly just dark in general, the camera is still going to try to make those things brighter and, and average those out to middle gray, even though they're supposed to be black. So because you have more black, the camera tries to compensate and increase the brightness of the image, making the image look a little bit gray. And when the camera does that to the image, when it tries to brighten the image, what it's basically doing is it's, it's increasing the ISO in your camera and that leads to more noise or more grain. So that's why the images don't look that good. So one of my tips for shooting at night is actually adjusting the exposure. So once you click on whatever you need to be focused and exposed for, you can then adjust your exposure and I usually darken the image. That makes the blacks blacker or as black as they should be. So for example, the sky doesn't look so gray, it looks, you know, darker. And that will also decrease the ISO that's used by the camera and it's going to make the image look better overall. So that is a tip for you guys who are especially struggling at shooting photos at night. Now the fourth tip is to lock your exposure and your focus. One of the problems that uh, you might encounter is that when you tap something to be in focus and exposed, sometimes if you don't click the shutter fast enough, it might change or you might accidentally click something else and then it might change. Uh, but most of the time you want that still once you've already set it. 
So what you want to do is with the iPhone at least, you hold down that box and in approximately three seconds, it locks the exposure and the, uh, the focus. And once that happens, it's just there until you unlock it, which you can do by clicking again. But you know, if you're going to take your time to maybe compose the shot or something else, you want to lock that exposure. So again, hold it for three seconds so that your exposure and your focus is locked and then you can take the image and it's going to be nice and clear. The final tip has to do with editing your images. A lot of you guys like to keep your images how they are when they're shot and that's cool. If you guys are into that, then you don't need to watch this final tip. But for those of you that do want to edit your photos, uh, this is, you know, this is the tip for you. Now the first thing you want to make sure you're doing is shooting without a filter on. So when you shoot with the iPhone, you can already have some photo filters uh, preset so that when you take the picture, it already has a filter on. You want to not do that. You want to shoot at normal or none. And so that's, that way you can make editing easier afterwards because you don't already have a filter on it. And the next thing you want to do is edit your photos. And again, you don't have to do this, but this is something I like doing. If you're going to post on Instagram, you can use the Instagram filters or the Instagram edit settings. But the app that I like to use is called VSCO or VSCO Cam. And this is a company that makes not just filters for the phone, but they also make presets for Lightroom and for Photoshop, if you guys use those as well. I use uh, Lightroom and I do have some of their, their presets and they're very, very nice. They're not, you know, super accurate to film or how film would be, but you know, you kind of get that look. And if that's what you, you like, then they're, they're very good for that. And I think they've gone down in price since they were launched like a couple of years ago. So, you know, they're, they're very good, especially if you want those presets. But on the phone, the app is super easy to use. I like it because uh, the filters that you get are very nice already and you can buy premium ones for not so much. And, you know, if you know what you want, you can just buy one pack and then you'll get a, a couple of good filters and you can just use those over and over again. And I also like their advanced editing settings. Things like fade and things like the highlight and shadow tone, those are things that were on VSCO before they were on Instagram. So now that they're on Instagram, you know, some of the people who don't use VSCO don't know that they were actually on VSCO long before they were on Instagram. And that's why I started using VSCO. They just had a lot more editing settings. Now, I'm not going to go too much into this because I can talk for days about this app, but that's just, you know, my little tip, VSCO, shoot flat and then shoot and then edit with VSCO. I like using C7 and C9 and doing some minor adjustments. You guys might like a different look, but that's what's cool about VSCO. They have a bunch of packs that you can use and they all look different. So that's it guys. Those are my five tips on shooting with your phone, specifically my iPhone. But you know, these tips again will apply to any smartphone you have if they have the same, you know, features like autofocus, auto exposure adjustments, auto exposure lock, all those things will apply to your smartphone as well. You can check out my photos on Instagram. I'll leave the link down below. I still do post DSLR photos, but I am posting more photos with this because I do like the camera. And yeah, that's it guys. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you guys in the next video.